This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we got us an air conditioner situation that's not working right. We've got a dining room area that's supposedly not cooling very well. I just walked the dining room area. A good portion of the spiral duct is closed off. They said something about airflow wasn't very good. I walked over here, took a look at this unit, and it was running. I haven't checked the blower yet, so we need to check that and see how that's doing. As far as condenser fans, they're pumping out the heat really good. Coils, they're starting to get cottonwood already built up on them. But let's check a look, take a look at the uh, blower belt, see if it's slipping by chance. We got that loosened up. Oh, look at that. See that belt, how far out it out. It's loose as a goose. Not good. Not good at all. This is gonna be a brain dead one. Maybe. Now well, let's take a yeah, listen to that. Nice. Get on there, see if we can tighten it up, see if the bearings are ready to fall apart yet. Let's see if the blower wheel's packed full of crud. It, uh, anything's possible. Some of this equipment doesn't get uh, on any type of service. It just uh, gets called in when it's broke. Bouncing around here to the filters. Looks like we've got some accumulation already on that. Yeah, it's not wretched, but it definitely ain't wonderful. Sucking them leaves right up off the ground. Not the greatest design of an economizer if I've ever seen one. Those leaves are getting into everything. I don't think they got a drain trap hooked on this thing because it's leaking everywhere. You can see how it's rusted out. Everything down there. Everything here. I don't. Here's the drain hole. I guess it just drains out the bottom. That's nice. It's always a bad sign when you see that much dirt on the other side of the coil. So you figure it's probably packed into the main side. Yeah, it's just a touch loose. I'm sure it just happened. Pulley is wore really nice. Oh yeah, and fan blades. Oh yeah, that's nice. Let's see if we can feel any play in this blower wheel here. Feels pretty solid. Yeah, it's just the skosh war. And clawed up a little bit. Well, you know, it's one of them things where it really could use a good coil cleaning. Condenser's probably getting pretty dirty. But how much time do we get to work with it? That's the question. Seems to always be the same stuff. Low on charge, plaque air filters, poor airflow, bad motors. Loose connections. All right, so these are always a treat. Looks like it's been clawed up with channel locks. Yeah, you ain't gonna get on there. Somebody's ran this bolt all the way up into that thread there. That's what happens when you try to tighten it by cranking on the nut. It eats into it, so they've scracked, they, they racked that up and screwed it up. So now we gotta try to back that off. They've just not understanding how it works doesn't help a lot. Let's see if we can get that off there and then loosen that up and then rotate this with some channel locks. It's, it's screwed up now. Not a whole lot you can do with it. Polishing a turd, that's about all we can do today. Okay, basically, what we ended up doing was backing up the nut that actually tightens it. And then was able to get a hold of this crown nut here. I think it's what called, I don't know. But either way, we gotta get this one out. This, this nut here that they've got is worthless because it's just gonna spiral up the threads because somebody went monkey grip on that thing and just snapped the top right out of that and so it's worthless what i've done in the past just loosen up 
this nut that's been channel locked get on there with your channel lock since it's already practically screwed up. Let's see if you can get it to turn. I'm just not wanting to. Yeah, it'd be better off just replace the whole pulley on the motor, pulley here. Yeah, I think it's just the gears are messed up on it. Let's see if we can walk this thing down here. Maybe we can loosen it up a little bit. There we go. The teeth mechanisms and latch onto this thing over here. Maybe we throw some go go juice in there, it might help out. Let's see if we can make this tooth here engaged. There we go. There we go. Oh, that sounds good. Sounds great. I gotta get a ruler on there and try to get lined up. For right now, I'm gonna order a new pulley, order a new idler, new bolt, all that. See how it runs here. Come back and deal with this later as far as the rest of this. I don't know what all you can do with that drainage there. It's kind of missing stuff there. Got underneath here and got looking. You can see the PVC they've got right there. So if we got some pipe and some 90s which of course that looks like it's at least an inch inch and a quarter area and ran that out here on this very flat ground and you know what's happened is people have stepped on it and broke it that would uh at least properly trap it i only carry three quarter on my truck not much i can do with that so i'm gonna have to come back with that too so we measured up the pulley it's about three and three quarters by five eighths diameter we'll get the filters ordered let's kick it on see what it does see if it uh, squeals like a piggy people are getting ready for lunch here that kicked right on nice and smooth I'm moving some air now that's a lot better than what it was i'll uh spend time on the charge and all that when we come back any sense of doing a whole lot right now Take a quick look at these blades, make sure there's nothing cracked on them, which does not appear to be. What we got here on this? Doesn't look like anything's cracked on that either. It's something you want to keep track of. You get little breaks in the blades. These aren't uh, aluminum like some of that stuff, so these are actually galvanized. They hold up a lot better. And it uh, does not look like any of those are damaged, which is good. Got to keep an eyeball out for that, because otherwise, if it would fling a blade into that coil, yeah, two or three dollars of refrigerant there lost since it's our 22. Yeah, what do we got here? How many pounds of love? 18.9 and 21. All right, so it's running, cranking the heat out. Let's see what kind of temperature rise we get across this thing. Let me check our temperature drop next after the. Let's say 92. So it looks like about 133 area. So let's just say 132 versus 92. It's 40 degree rise. I think that's at the top end there where it needs to be clean. Let's see what we got for a drop. We got our supply there. I have to grab a drill to do that. All right, looks like 60 degrees there on that. I got quite a few registers. I'd say at least six that are closed. They were trying to push more air to the uh, front and back restroom, stuff like that. Stuff that I don't think is gonna be a big deal in cooling that we might be better off just to open them all up, but we may check out when we come back. So if you got 74, it looks like there. Just go for 74, so that puts us at a 14 degree drop across it. Need to get that trap on there. It's not gonna drain for crap, which is why it's all messed up. Uh, it'd be kind of hard to do that trap too with the way they got it flush like that. It'd been nice they would have raised it up, put it up on some blocks of some sort. Well, that's going to wrap this one up, guys. I'll get back on it. Okay, better late than never. We're finally back. Let's go ahead and shut this turd down. We've got a condensate drain to put on this thing, a new pulley and such. They've already got the mail in there. That freaking bracket right there is in the way it's too high so we're gonna have to get in there with sawzall that's a little better 
partially deaf now, but yeah, it's all good. Well, it's been like a week or two since I've been here and I don't remember what size I told them. So I don't know if it was me that did it wrong or if they did it wrong or what, but either way, I went and picked up some uh, one inch. I think what we're gonna do is try to make this like that. It's not my preferred method, but there's a lot of stupid people that step on this and then break it. And that's the reason why I don't have one. If I make it like that, that should give me at least the inch or better. It's better than what we had. I, I'm putting it out here so we can get lower. It allows them to pull this door out and not smack it off. Now, if they're still stupid and they step on it, I mean, you know, you can't fix stupid and that's the problem you deal with. There's a lot of people just don't care about anything. They just break shit because they're just ignorant. I uh, had street 90s originally, but beggars can't be choosers. And that's about where we're at is in the begging, begging booth here. The alternative was to bring it over here and do the trap, but I'm kind of leery of that because once again, you got people walking through here, could trip over it because they ain't watching what they're doing. Debating whether or not I want to glue it in there. Thought about gluing it in there and then leave it unglued here, but I'm not sure. Went ahead and glued it. I had to take it apart. That hole right there ain't even, if you're lucky, three quarter inch. I'm just gonna glue it in. It just really has more to do with just getting it trapped. That's not near as deep as what I'd like it, but you could actually go like that. There we go. But then if they step on it, well, they could put some of these tiles underneath there keep them from breaking it there we go now if they step on it and that's still below the overall depth of the drain inside there I am NOT cleaning this pipe usually I do if it's inside the house I definitely do there we go well It's definitely gonna be better than what it was, and as you can tell, it's not been right for quite a long time. All right, this little gizmo here is my track mat. And it's literally called a track mat. Made in the United States of America. A lot of plasticky type stuff. But it gives you something to lay down on. Uh, these guys use these out on race tracks, derby, stuff like that. And I don't use it very often, but when I need it, it's kind of nice. We're gonna go ahead and just completely get rid of this. That pulley is totally jacked to the rack maximus. This is all gonna come out. There we go. So I turned it backwards a little bit. Let's get that out of there. All right, so see the gear mechanism thing here? We're gonna have to reuse that. And uh, so yeah, we're still gonna have to undo it. But. So we went ahead and whacked that thing right off of there. Got the new pulley. Fancy, fancy. Doesn't look like there's any special way, no more length on one over the other. So that's kind of cool. They made that brain dead. No instructions, not that we'd read them anyway. Deal there that through there like that then we'll put the nut on there to tighten up and once that's on there we'll put this new crank them nut here crown crank them nut all right grab the impact ran that thing on there with the deep impact socket and it's in place now so that goes on there like that so see how that is we've got Got that piece there. When this tightens up, it's going to squeeze that between the metal that's on the rail. And that there's going to tighten it. This here just holds it in so that you can get your position on your on your rail. I'm going to put that up in there. The gears are on that side. So we're going to go over like this and then rotate it into it. See that? And then when you rotate it, boom, locks in. Unlocked, locked. Let's get the straight edge out and see if we can get this thing straightened up and figured out you can use a string or you can use a ruler whatever something better than nothing 
yeah. I guess it's kind of in the balls, balls park. We're going to probably make this go down a couple turns. Match it up to the other one. There we go. That one matches up. That's pretty dang close right there. That's about as good as you're going to get it because you're always going to be off a little bit on that other pulley. The set key needs pounded up there a little further. Might be able to get on that with the edge of this. Hopefully, not knock it out of it. There we go. There we go. Good deal. Just use a little sharp edge here. Bearings feel like they're going out. So we're gonna leave this other pulley here. That way if anybody has any questions about whether it was worth a crap or not. Okay, I went in there and got it hooked on there. See, I think the problem is people get in there and just crank on this uh, crown nut, thinking they can make it turn without loosening the other one. And you really can't. That's pretty good. Yeah, see right now it's not doing much. If it ain't turning, don't keep turning it because you'll run that nut right through. Yeah, that's terrific. The triangulation here, if you look at it, I don't know if it's all that great. The idler pulley's up higher than the rest of it, so we have to bring this motor up a little higher. You can see that pulley is maxed out even though we've got it opened up. That's how much, that was the width was the same as the other one but holy mackerel. We're gonna open that up a turn and get that seat down in there, otherwise that thing's gonna derail. That's better. I can't sit there and record every square second of this thing. We're seated a little better. We're gonna check our amp draw, which to make sure we're safe on that. This motor's getting ready to go out next. It sounds good. I'm not hearing no squeaks. The belt looks good because uh, I changed, I think I changed that when I was here last. And uh, everything's tight and tidy. You can't see any real twists or anything from what I can see from here. Everything looks good there to there. So we're good on that. Got that back on there. We got our amperage wrote down 13.4 to 12.6 is what it max is, whether it's 208 or 230 volt. The motor's on, we're at eight and a half, well below that 13 to 12 and a half. It don't sound that healthy. Them bearings sound like crap. This whole unit's about done had it. I just had a call at one of their other locations and they had to replace it. The coils can't be split. They, uh, it appears they made these with single piece coil up to about here and they split the last couple feet. I don't know what their thought process was behind that. I think there was none. I had to get it with a monster big gas powered power washer to get it out. But even then, I don't think we truly got it clean. And then when we had a compressor that was open and it had already replaced blower motor the year before, just constantly going bad. And these heat exchangers look like they're about ready to go too. It's just a money pit. We're good on amperage. Let's take a look at that belt, see what it's doing. With that one to the idler pulley being closer to the motor, and you can see that's off. I'm gonna raise the motor pulley up height-wise. Since there's more distance to the drive pulley, maybe that'll make a difference. Checking everything there, that right there is stationary. You can see where that's fixed. So there's nothing rubbing there and there's nothing rubbing up on top either. Uh, so all I can think is we're just move this pulley up a little higher. All right, so I raised it up a little bit. can't hear it out here, but the bearings are probably starting to go out on it too. They don't feel loose when you wiggle them, left, right, up, or down. Same thing with the motor. The motor, you can hear it, but they're not loose yet either. I know how things are done here, so they're gonna wait till probably it goes completely out. All I can do is note it. Uh, so that's gonna be it for that. Uh, the compressors have kicked on. But not heat, so gonna wrap that one up as always guys thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe check us out on instagram and facebook and until next time we'll catch you on the next one later